3 billion human lives ended on August 29, 1997. The survivors of the nuclear fire called the war Judgment Day. They lived only to face a new nightmare, the war against the machines. Here's a look at the new Pure Arts. This is the Terminator 2 Judgment Day 1 to 1 scale art mask of the T-800 endoskeleton. This non-wearable mask replica features a table and wall display options, as well as an LED system for both its display base and its glowing red eyes. to get this review underway the first thing we're going to do is measure off to the very top of the endoskeleton's head i also want to send out a big thank you to the folks over at pure arts who were very nice enough to send this my way so i could showcase this to you guys the viewers or if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself i can provide the link down below to pure arts website and i might also add this is coming out now in september 2019 at a very limited release of only 800 copies the measurements for, though, the height of the endoskeleton mask replica, non-wearable, of course, is 17.3, about 17 and a half inches in height. And that translates to inches as being 44.1, a little over 44 centimeters tall. The statue was produced using poly resin, resulting in the statue being quite considerably heavy. It sits at 9.7 pounds in weight, with an overall package weight at 16.1 pounds in total. To come included with the statue, the folks over at Pure Arts include a two-sided instruction guide. Pretty straightforward instructions with more of the elaborate instructions located on the back of the sheet. The front of the sheet, however, does give you a breakdown of the components inside, meaning the head portrait as well as the two-way to display base. The base itself can be mounted in which the head is just fixed on top, like I've currently got here in the first looks of this review. Or you can also flip the stand around, mount it to the wall, for example, and you can have the head portrait sticking out from the wall. Pretty cool. Uh, up at the top, there are some little warnings you should be aware of. For example, do not rub the statue with thinner benzene, alcohol, or any other corrosive chemical which could damage the statue. Do not place the statue in areas with high temperature and humidity. Use three AA LR6 batteries, 1.5 volt. Do not mix old and new batteries. Do not mix different types of batteries. Remove batteries when not in use or discharged, and make sure you to use a right fixation components to support a weight of an eight kilogram when mounting the statue to the wall. After all, this is a fragile product. Be careful during installation or movement. On the other side of the guide though, it tells you exactly how to mount the brackets. For example, you will get a paper guide to tell you whereabouts those screws go. You can screw them into your wall, mount the base to the wall sideways, and as you can see here, this is how you can display it as an alternate look. Certainly a strong contender if you are one that likes trophy statues. If this is an ideal situation then for you, you can mount the statue, like I said, sticking out from the wall. But there are two ways, two configurations, which I really like the fact that they do give you two options for displaying it. Once again, it shows you how to install the batteries. The batteries, I will note, though, are not included, but being that they are 3LR6 batteries, or your standard AA batteries, they are pretty easy to come by. And the fact that you only need three of them makes it all that much easier to get this guy all lit up. 
When you get out of the box, it comes in two parts, the main base, and like I said, the endoskeleton mask. We'll look at these individually. I may ultimately result in keeping this on the turntable because it's a lot easier to kind of give you guys the close-up looks, but I'll do my best here to kind of showcase in the meantime, the exquisite details that they put into the actual base itself. Very carefully, tipping it upside down. Here's the battery compartment underneath. I've already got my three AA batteries located inside. You've got felt feet all on the corners here so that it's not going to scratch on any surface that you may have it displayed. You got Terminator 2 Judgment Day up at the top. Out of the very, very limited amount of 800, this happens to be 707. And then you've got your three wall-mounted brackets. These are ones that are, of course, when you are mounting this to the wall, these are gonna sit against all three screws, making sure, of course, you are mounting this to three screws to properly distribute the weight. Further down to the display stand, you've got Terminator 2 Judgment Day, the Terminator endoskeleton, and any depiction of endoskeleton are trademarks of Studio Canal SAS, all rights reserved. Down below that, you've got Made in China by Pure Arts, www.purearts.com, and you've got their Pure Arts logo down below that. As I said, there are two ways to display this. For the majority of this review, we're going to just mount the endoskeleton head up onto the top of the base. But if you did mount this to the wall, for example, it would basically just stick out like this. The endoskeleton mask would be going down this way. As you can see, there are connector holes both on the top and on the front. Both of them actually do have the wiring system running through it. When you will eventually see it, when I get the lights all working on this, you'll see that it actually does light up the LED lights on the endoskeleton which is a pretty neat accomplishment as I said there's the connector point on the front a big open socketed area in which the endoskeleton will slip into that or you can also mount it to the front if you display it like this getting a close-up look at the display base you can really see that pure arts put a lot of thought and care when designing this the focal point obviously is going to be the endoskeleton, but I would almost even argue the point that they put more detail, it seems, in the base itself. And there's a lot of little intricate details that as you turn it, you start spotting for yourself. Before we do that, though, let's have a look at the front placard, which features Terminator 2 Judgment Day and, like I said, a really nice silver metallic placard. Other than that, the color palettes used for this are really a dark gray, just an ash-colored gray, quite suitable for the context of Judgment Day. Primarily, the post that supports the endoskeleton's mask looks to be fallen posts and pillars that would have originally held the bridgework and roadways of the cities. And then sprinkled in that, you've got all these little intricate skulls, rubble, boulders, even on the side there, you've got a little, looks like a, a horse from the playground. Even like the little handles and the support struts that the kids would have put their feet on are there sculpted also in the horse. Some really nice detailing done there. Looks like we've got some rib cages. On the side, you've got the kind of the girders and the steel posts that would have held everything in place. And even spinning it around further, you've got more indications there of skulls and more human remains. And one nice little touch that I like is this right here, the giant, large, looks like a, a truck tire that's been embedded into the side of the rock face. The next thing we'll have a look at is the endoskeleton mask. It's a bit jarring, I have to admit, to be holding a one-to-one -one scale endoskeleton head, actually, in my hands. Uh, before we look at some close-up details here, and there's really a lot to marvel here, I want to also just flip this around, show you what will be the connector point when we do attach this to the base. Now, again, this is the upright configuration, so we're going to attach it to the top. But if you wanted to mount this to your wall like a trophy, you would attach it located on the side, and it connects the exact same way. Before we go ahead and add the head portrait though, I wanna show you guys some close-up details because there's really a lot to admire here. An otherwise chrome surfaced exterior, you can see that they even the chrome itself has some weathering and wear done to it. It's really nicely done. I don't know if it's simply just dirt or if it's slight rusting that has started to occur, but there's imperfections to the chrome, only adding to the realism of this particular piece. You've got the eye areas. Now these will be LED lit. I'll show you guys how that works in a second. 
You can even see mechanically how the eyeballs are attached to place. The recessed section of the nasal cavity, a, a close detail that you don't tend to see too often in the Terminator films, something now as a physical piece that I can actually show you guys a little bit closer details of. I didn't realize that this section of the bridge of the nose actually sunk in in the movie. So again, looking at a, a true one-to-one -one scale replica of this, you can kind of catch some of the details that the films otherwise wouldn't be able to show you. Yeah, you've got some of these pistons represented on the sides of the face that will allow the jaw to open and close. The jaw doesn't open and close on this particular piece. And one of the trademark traits of the endoskeletons is the fact that it would have the human... I guess these would be still synthetic in the film. I can't imagine that they're using real human teeth. But, I mean, looking at it, it almost looks like Pure Arts would have taken human teeth and planted them in place on both the upper and lower lips. It's really incredible how much detail they've been able to put in even just the teeth. You can even see that it looks like there's some cavities or indentations happening naturally to the teeth. The teeth are sort of a combination of lighter pearl colors mixed with off yellows and off creams. Again, it looks just as realistic as human teeth would be. And the fact that they've been able to put this on an actual one-to-one -one scale replica is quite incredible. Going back to the paint again, this is something I really like about this particular statue. When you look at the imperfections up here, again, you imagine that debris and dirt dust has hit this surface, but they've quite ingeniously not done it everywhere. Areas above the eyebrows, for example, areas around the cheeks, and more importantly, areas around the lips still stay really smooth and slick. I really like that. In fact, I was even worried as I was handling this for myself that I was maybe moving and brushing away some of the paint that was actually on the surface. But that's actually the way that they've done it. And it's quite ingenious the way that they've actually applied it. Okay, okay. So let's go ahead and attach this to the display base. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this connector peg and I'm going to fit it to the top. Again, if you wanted to have the other configuration, it would go to the side. But we're going to very carefully very carefully slide this down and line everything up. It becomes a little bit more difficult when you've got it on a turntable. And there you've got the endoskeleton already in place. Now let's have a look at the lights. Before we light this one up, I just want to show you one quick turnaround once again, showing you all the intricate details that Pure Arts put into this piece. Once again, something I mentioned earlier in this review, I like that the back of the mask is a continuation both in texturing and coloring to the base itself. If they had made the back of the mask the same chrome color, you would have the problem of where it was connecting looking jarring and sectioned from the rest of everything else. It wouldn't look like it was a continuation. By making this the same texturing and same coloring, it looks like it's just a continuation all the way up to the top, and I really do like that. So to turn on the lights for this, they're actually concealed as skulls on the side of the base. Very cleverly done. To turn them on, you're simply just going to push them in. The first skull triggers the spotlights that are going to be on the base. And I'll show you guys all those in a second. The second light right here, when pressed in, will turn on the ruby red lights of the endoskeleton mask. To best demonstrate that, I've just zoomed back. And we're going to go ahead and press the first button. Just press that in like so, and now you've got all the individual lights lit up. They're concealed underneath the rock facings. So you've got one right there, there, one on the side, one on the back, just underneath the pillar here, and then a few located here on the side as well. The second light, and I guess the more crucial light, is this button right at the back. Once that's pressed in, we'll go ahead and do that right now. Press it in just like, there we go. And now you've got the LEDs very brightly presented here on the eyes of the endoskeleton's mask. Realizing it would be much more effective to showcase the lights with the lights turned off myself, I've gone ahead and cut the studio lights so that I can do another turntable turn and showcase you guys all the lights that are on the base itself. Now the lights seem to, at first glance, illuminate differently, some brighter than others. And I think it's the exact same light, but I think because some of the lights are a little bit more recessed into the base, causes the lights to appear brighter in some areas and not as bright in others. 
you can see even on the side how details now show up a lot better by having the lights shining directly on it. Speaking of the lights shining directly, I'm sure you'll also notice the bright ruby red eyes piercing right back at you as they're coming from the socket sections of the endoskeleton's face. I think what even makes this even more of a spectacular statue is the idea that this is a one-to-one -one scale. Often at times we are looking at smaller scale representations of the endoskeleton, so it doesn't have as much the imposing presence. All of a sudden when you start talking one-to-one, -one, and this is what an endoskeleton's head would actually look like, I think it comes across much more imposing than some smaller representations. Terminator 2 Judgment Day still remains to be one of my all-time favorite sci-fi films. Actually, scratch that. Not just sci-fi. Terminator 2 Judgment Day still remains to be one of my all-time favorite films, period. The idea that Arnie could come back and reprise his role somewhat, somewhat, and join forces with Sarah and John Connor not only to stop the T-1000 from killing John, but to also prevent the inevitable Judgment Day from ever taking place. Uh, critics also hail Terminator 2 Judgment Day as really being the defining movie where special effects drastically changed. Some of the stuff that they were creating for this film are special effects that companies are using nowadays. The practical effects were also far greater than what they were able to produce for the original Terminator film, which meant that the endoskeletons looked far more menacing in this film than they did in the previous one. Here in the Terminator 2 Judgment Day 1 to 1 scale art mask, Pure Arts perfectly capture the menacing look of the T-1000, exquisitely done as a 1 to 1 scale statue. Not only do I really like the base, but the icing on the cake is the fact that the base actually lights up. Not only do you get the light up options of the display base, but you also get those bright ruby red eyes staring right back at you. The fact that you can also display the statue in two different ways, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to display it like what you're seeing right here, but the available option of hanging it from your wall like an actual trophy is definitely tempting and something that many collectors will definitely want to consider. If you are considering though, wanting to add this one to your collection, you can currently pick this up over on Pure Arts website. Don't worry, don't worry, I'll provide the link down below. The price point for this one is uh, $389 US. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, like I said, I will put the link down below if you guys are interested in adding this one to your collection. It's at a very, very limited release of only 800 copies, which means when they sell out, you're not gonna be able to get this one in your collection. So you may wanna act fast and click the link down below and order yours today. Again, a big thank you to the folks over at Pure Arts who were very nice enough to send this my way. Today we were having a look at the Pure Arts Terminator 2 Judgment Day 1 to 1 scale art mask of the T-800 Endoskeleton, a fantastic looking piece. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other statue reviews, there's a playlist that you should be able to find also in the video description. Speaking of also in the video description, just above that, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Make sure you hit that bell notification if you haven't done so already. And stay tuned because there's going to be a whole lot of cool collectibles coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.